Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this rather unusual Memorial Day celebration for 2020. We are unified together today to honor the men and women who swore to defend our nation and our civil liberties, and in so doing, have lost their lives. Here to start off our program is Mayor Wayne Schmidt. Good morning. As I stand before you today, Normally I would see Algoma Fire and Rescue personnel, the grade school and high school band, Poppy Princess, Pastor Taylor, family members and friends of current and fallen veterans and our color guard. Memorial Day is a time for us to recognize our veterans' efforts, sacrifices and pain they suffered so that we may remain free. The wars that they fought were wars against the human enemy. Today we are fighting a war against an invisible enemy called COVID-19. These are unprecedented times. Today there is no parade, no band playing the Star Spangled Banner, no crowds gathered and no poppy princess. Because we are unable to gather as a group, we should not forget what Memorial Day is all about. If you see a veteran, please make sure to thank them for everything that they have done. I would also ask that you thank all the health care workers who have given so much to help combat COVID-19. In closing, I would like to read a quote from President Ronald Reagan. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in the United States where men were free. Thank you for coming today and help celebrate Memorial Day. And again, God bless America, and together we can stay safe. Recently, there was a post going around on Facebook of the Sentinels of the Old Guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington National Cemetery, still guarding, still marching their 21 steps, still carrying on the tradition despite the fact that there is no one there to watch, no cameras, no press. Why do they do it? Why do they spend their duty time studying the cemetery history and 300 of the most important grave locations, cleaning their weapons, preparing their uniforms? Why do they go through such rigorous training to stand watch 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, in any weather, at all costs? The tomb symbolizes the sacrifices of all American service members. Three carved Greek figures on the sarcophagus represent peace, victory, and valor. These elite sentinels dedicate two years of their time and service to bestow the highest honor upon their fallen brothers and sisters in arms. Even though our local Memorial Day celebrations look different this year, the purpose remains the same. We can look to those sentinels that continue to stand guard and see that this is something that has not changed. Likewise, as a veteran and a member of the American Legion, I could not let this important day pass by without giving rightful honor to our comrades in arms who have gone before us. The American Legion has 10 clauses in the preamble to its constitution. The fifth clause reads, to preserve the memories and incidents of our association in all wars. Our service in defense of America is one of the greatest experiences in the life of a veteran. Memories of that service mean more than flashbacks, muddy trenches, the perils of the ocean, or dogfights in the wild blue yonder. It also means comradeship, bravery, teamwork, sacrifices, miseries, and hardships of military campaigns shared in common. It's the bond that binds all veterans together in mutual respect and gratitude. It also means keeping fresh forever the memories of the supreme sacrifices of these American patriots. Just like the Sentinels of the Old Guard, that is what we will do every year without fail. Faithful annual observance of Memorial Day, no matter the weather, 
at all costs. And now it is my honor to introduce Marine veteran and American Legion Post 236 adjutant, Bill Venice. This Memorial Day presents some new and unique challenges, as well as an ongoing crisis. However, every crisis has new heroes. During the 9-11 attacks, they were the first responders running into burning and crumbling buildings as others ran out. Now, during the coronavirus pandemic, the most visible heroes are the healthcare professionals who are saving others and risking their own lives while doing so. These heroes have much in common with the people that we honor today, America's fallen veterans. They are men and women who have sacrificed their own lives so others could live. They are both elite and ordinary. They are elite in the sense of character. Giving your life so others could live is the ultimate definition of selflessness. They are ordinary in the fact that they represent the diverse fabric of our country. They are rich and poor, black and white, male and female. They come from every ethnicity and background. In short, they look like any one of us. As we celebrate the selfless and untiring performance of the healthcare workers during the COVID-19 pandemic, it brings to mind the military medics, doctors, and nurses who sacrificed their lives while treating others on a battlefield. One such hero was pharmacist mate third class Jack Williams. The Navy Reserve Corpsman was only 20 years old when he landed on Iwo Jima 75 years ago. On March 3, 1945, James Naughton, a Marine in Williams unit, was wounded by a grenade. While under intense enemy fire, Williams dragged Naughton to a shallow depression and treated his wounds. Williams used his own body as a screen and was shot four times, yet he continued. After he treated Naughton, Williams dressed his own wounds. He then proceeded to treat another Marine despite his own immense pain. While heading to the rear, he was hit by a sniper's bullet and killed. For his actions, Petty Officer Williams was awarded the Medal of Honor. We also remember Army veterans like Lieutenant Sharon Lane. Lieutenant Lane threw herself into her work as a nurse. While serving in Colorado, she requested a transfer to Vietnam. There at least you are busy 12 hours a day, six or seven days a week, she said in a 1968 letter to her parents. In the early morning of June 8, 1969, Sharon's tour of duty ended. A Soviet-built rocket struck the hospital. Lieutenant Sharon A. Lane was killed in action at the age of 25. If she were still here, her skills as a nurse might still be benefiting us during the current crisis, but not all of the heroes working during the COVID-19 pandemic are in the healthcare industry. Grocers, first responders, delivery workers, and drive through restaurant employees are just a few of the many people that we rely on to provide vital services for society while risking their own safety. The military also has heroes in every occupational field, truck drivers, cooks, and administrative clerks. Military service requires great risk. Roy Knight Jr. was a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. On May 19, 1967, he was shot down while attacking a target on the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Laos. He was possibly promoted to colonel. Last year, a joint team from the Defense POW-MIA Accounting Agency discovered and later identified Colonel Knight's remains. When his remains arrived at Dallas Love Field, a crowd had gathered to witness the dignified transfer of the flag-draped casket from the Southwest Airlines jet into the receptive arms of the military honor guard. One observer reported that the entire crowd fell silent. The Southwest flight was piloted by another Air Force veteran, Colonel Knight's son, Brian. Brian Knight was only five years old when he said goodbye to his father as the elder Knight left for Vietnam. This is another legacy that these heroes leave behind, a legacy that includes their sons, daughters, grieving parents, grandparents, and friends. Their heroic acts are sometimes perform performed to protect those with whom they serve. 
Corporal Jason Dunham was a squad leader with the 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines in Iraq. On April 14, 2004, his squad approached a Toyota Land Cruiser. After his squad discovered AK-47s in the vehicle, the enemy insurgent exited and engaged in hand-to-hand -hand fighting with the unit. The driver dropped a grenade. To save his fellow Marines, Corporal Dunham made the ultimate sacrifice. He threw himself on the grenade and tried to use his helmet to shield the blast. Severely wounded by the grenade's fragments, Corporal Dunham was taken off life support eight days later. Corporal Dunham died so other Marines could live. He too was awarded the Medal of Honors for his gallantry. Approximately one million men and women of the U.S. military have lost their lives in defense of our nation since the founding of this great republic. Not all have died from enemy fire. Some have died from diseases that have too often festered around war zones. Oftentimes, deaths from disease and accidents outnumbered casualties caused by enemy weapons. Even when the enemy is an invisible virus or a microscopic germ, the sacrifices made are just as meaningful. The U.S. military has already lost service members to COVID-19. This Memorial Day, as we continue to honor those who fell for us in battle, let us also pause to remember those who have also sacrificed their lives while serving others. May God bless them, and may God bless you for remembering them here today. Thank you. Before we close our program today, I would like to take a moment to thank some people who have made this video possible. Mayor Wayne Schmidt and Bill Venice for being our speakers today. Commander Randy Novak of the Algoma Honor Guard and those members who were present today, including the Bugler, Dakota Berg. Justin Steiner for the videography and production. And a special thanks to all of you watching and supporting our effort to observe this year's Memorial Day. We will now close in prayer, followed by a reading of the names of the Algoma area veterans who passed away this past year. The Algoma Honor Guard will then fire a salute, followed by the playing of taps. Our Father who art in heaven, we ask thy blessing upon those here assembled and upon those of our departed service men and women who have preceded us in death. Especially, Heavenly Father, we beseech thee on behalf of those who died in battle, with none of their dear ones to comfort them, and with little opportunity to prepare to report before thy judgment throne. For all of our fellow service members who faithfully served their country and who sacrificed and bled so that our people might have freedom, justice, and the right to worship thee in their own way. David A. Lockwood, Algoma, Wisconsin, August 12, 2019, Vietnam, U.S. Army. Richard W. Lowry, Algoma, Wisconsin, August 17, 2019, U.S. Army. Floyd C. Shoning, Jr., Algoma, Wisconsin, September 22, 2019, Vietnam, U.S. Navy. Marvin A. Vandervest, Algoma, October 4, 2019, World War II, U.S. Navy. Alvin O. Jesse, Algoma, Wisconsin, October 8, 2019, U.S. Air Force. Vaughn L. Galvin, Algoma, Wisconsin, December 13, 2019, World War II, U.S. Army Air Corps. Myron J. Hagley, Algoma, Wisconsin, December 16, 2019, U.S. Army. Merle J. Gilson, Algoma, Wisconsin, December 23, 2019, Korea, U.S. Army. Lawrence W. Bush, Algoma, Wisconsin, January 1, 2020, U.S. Army. 
Thomas H. Bridges, Algoma, January 14, 2020, U.S. Army. Jerome W. Pico, Algoma, January 21, 2020, Korea, U.S. Navy. James L. Klapotik, Algoma, February 15, 2020, Vietnam, U.S. Army. Brock A. Kleindl, Algoma, February 20th, 2020, Vietnam, U.S. Coast Guard. Earl I. Peterson, Algoma, February 24th, 2020, Korea, U.S. Air Force. Ricky A. Callahan, Algoma, March 27, 2020, Vietnam, U.S. Army. Dennis McMillan, May 1, 2020, Vietnam, U.S. Marine Corps. Jeff Nell, May 8, 2020, U.S. Army. Hey! Fire! Hey! Fire! Hey! Fire!